1913, the doors opened for the first time of Stafford Library, funded by Andrew Carnegie and given as a gift to the people of Stafford so that they could educate and better themselves. It was built in a prominent position at the top of Bridge Street and was an imposing and attractive design. 103 years later, the building stands empty, its condition deteriorating. It has now been listed, but it is still at risk and people are looking at the building and wondering what it could be used for now. This video is going to take you on a tour of the old library, which is on two floors. It's going to show the areas of the building and what the friends of the old library think it could be used for. It will also show the parts of the building that are most at risk because of damage and disrepair. Because of the size of the room, the Friends of the Old Library believe that it would be perfect for a community meeting space for all sorts of groups of people from Stafford to meet up in. One of the purposes of the building would be for children and adults to learn about their heritage and this room would be perfect for displays of the history of Stafford of all kinds, our natural, landscape and industry. It would also be good for an education room for people to take children to learn as well. This room was once two rooms. The part of it was a library and the other part was the staff room. And all that's left of the staff room is a rather lovely fireplace at the end. The first of the three sets of steps in the building was built in 1913 and has the same lattice work designs, geometric designs that are repeated throughout the building. The windows here you can see show a St Andrew's flag and a Union Jack. As we know, Andrew Carnegie was from Scotland, so that's quite a nice touch. At the top of the stairs, the first room we come to is the children's room, or was, and when we go inside we see not only are we struck by the amount of light that comes flooding in because the whole of the upstairs of the library has got window lights in the ceiling but also we can see that at the end of the room there is a theatre, a small stage and a set of steps going up the side. What one is also struck by as they go into the room is the smell of dry rot and there's a huge great big black exploded dry rot in the corner and all around this room there is orange powder which is actually dry rot spores. There's also lines along the walls where the dry rot has travelled through the plasterwork and brickwork to find other areas of the building and it has reached out right across the building. So there's a lot of dry rot in here. The friends of the old library think that once restored and repaired this room would be perfect as a little theatre for smaller performance groups or bands or a cinema that would be affordable and open to the public. Behind the stage if you go through the door you find a room which is currently toilets but the friends of the old library think that this space should actually be converted to a changing rooms for people who wanted to perform on the stage. You can see above the theatre the original Stafford Borough coat of arms and below that it appears that there is a wall taken up half the stage. In fact that's just a partition wall and that could be very easily taken out so that the whole stage would be opened up to the auditorium. The reason that the old library has got two floors is because of a man called Clement Ragg. He had a very famous collection of ethnographic items which at the time was stored in the Shire Hall. The Shire Hall could no longer store the museum collection and so it was moved to the library and this space here was where it was kept. 
As you can see, this space is absolutely riddled with damp and covered in mould. Above it, the roof is a pool of water and later on in the video we'll see how flat the roof is and how much it stores water and why the building is in such a state of disrepair. This was initially part of the museum. The friends think that it would be perfect for an art gallery because of the flat walls and because again of the window lights making it perfect exhibition space. On the rear wall you can see that the ceiling has partially fallen in due to the damp and you can actually see damp marks all around at both ends. This would obviously take a lot of money and time to be able to repair. Here's an example of work that was started by previous developers and a failed project. The reason that this wasn't continued is because of the amount of damp that was coming through from upstairs. But you can also see how the space could very, very usefully be broken up into smaller workshop spaces. Again, this room has been very much affected by damp. There are lots of dehumidifiers throughout the upstairs of the building where the previous developers had tried to get the damp under control and failed before the project was given up. When you walk into this room, the smell of damp really hits you and you can see the damage around the ceilings and the top of the walls. It's very, very cold, but it's a very large room and would be perfect as a facility space for things like arts and health activities. Yoga, Tai Chi, arts therapies could all go on in this space. At the top and just around the corner is an adjacent smaller space which if closed off and soundproof the friends think would be perfect for a recording studio and rehearsal space for bands. Now we're going onto the roof and just one of the areas where water gets in and manages to get through the roof because the roofing felt is largely rotten. It's going to cost a lot of money to replace this but you can see that if it was replaced and repaired the roof would be yet another space that could be open to the public as a rooftop garden or a performance area. The second set of stairs that we come to are iron spiral staircase and often get commented on by visitors who think they're extremely beautiful and indeed they are. But what people don't realise until they get halfway down the stairs is that there's a mezzanine room which is between the two floors. It's a small room and it's got very old bookcases and we know from people who used to work in the library that it was used to store newspapers. In the downstairs part of the 1962 extension is a large, open and attractive space that the friends think would be absolutely perfect for a performance and bar area. It's very important to have a social centre in the building and a place for people to be able to get refreshments before, after or during a performance. To the left side of this area is a part of the building that used to be offices, a kitchen and toilet for the workers. Unfortunately, when the developers were trying to make it into a restaurant, they hollowed this area out, making it completely impossible to use and then left it without doing it back up again. Once restored, the friends think this area could be put back into small spaces and used for cottage craft industries. This 1962 staircase, which is directly at the point where the 1913 and 1962 parts of the building meet, 
takes you up to the back of the theatre and art gallery space and into the function space. We hope you've enjoyed this video tour of the old library in Stafford and also we hope that you agree with us that the building could be very, very usefully made into an arts and cultural centre for Stafford. If you'd like to get in touch with us or support or find out more about the campaign, the details will be shown here.